Hey guys, this is Ryan from BlueSeaGaming.com and today I have a review of the Samsung Galaxy Tab 10x1 and here we go. It is 10.1 inches wide, 6.9 inches long, I guess you'd say, and uh, about a little bit over a quarter of a thick, quarter of an inch thick, weighs t about 20 ounces, and uh, the screen is. 16, a 6x9 resolution as opposed to iPads 4x3 even though it's about the same width. This is a tablet meant for uh, media consumption. It's meant to be held like, held like this, on the iPad like this. The camera says 2.0 megapixel in the front. I heard 1.3 at the most. On the back, 3.0. That is, I've heard 8, but it's most likely three. On top here, volume rocker, power button, speaker, speaker, and the weird thing came out I can't see here, but it's a 30 pin connector for charging and data. Two things weird about that. One, I was expecting micro SD since most, I mean, it make, makes more sense since I have tons of micro, micro USB cables here for charging my phone, and I'm kind of disappointed that it doesn't work with that. Also, when you're transferring data to or from here, you can't do anything else on there. So even if you want to browse on the web, connect to your computer or something, it locks you out. You, you can't, it's locked on the screen. Uh, it's a, obviously a dual, dual core, it's one gig, dual core, one gigahertz. So before 60 by 9 resolution. Camera, back camera, capable of 720p video. And the pictures on the Back are good. Video not that great, but it's okay. It's passable. Front is I think better than the back, but that and uh, it just they look a little bit better on the from the front. And also taking pictures like this, I, it seems fine. But you're trying to take a picture with the front facing camera. Holding it like this, or you know, like this, trying to take a picture, you kind of start shaking and you can't get a stable image, which I guess just only way to fix that is stronger arms with lighter hardware, which sub one pound would have been great. This is the like a pound and a third, so it's not, it's, it's close. Uh, this is a 16 gig Wi Fi only version, it does have Bluetooth and it actually has GPS. You know, it doesn't have 3G bands or anything here. Uh, it still can do GPS. Uh, Verizon just announced, or maybe even released, their 4G version, 4G LTE. And I'm sure, as with the original Tab 7 inch, it'll be on AT&T, T-Mobile, all, you know, all the characters soon. So, 7,000 milliamp hour battery, as opposed to my phone here which is 1500 or maybe even 1250 and other phones 1700, 1900 about the back you're going to get even on like the Atrix. Uh, battery life is pretty damn good. It uh, whole day watching videos on whiskey media sites, uh, Netflix, browsing the web, full and auto brightness. Um, uh, and it also charges pretty fast. Charge pretty, I charge pretty fast. Um, the one thing I don't like is some of the apps. Cause since it, this is a honeycomb, it ships with 3.1, uh, so apps need to be optimized for honeycomb to work the best. And Skype, some phones have video chat, some devices have video chat. This honeycomb device does not, either does a Zoom, which is also a honeycomb device. I tried to get hacked around, hacked APKs for the Skype, I couldn't find any. Netflix, I was actually able to find a hacked APK to work on honeycomb, which I believe Netflix and Skype on a tablet are, especially one like this, where it's pure media instead of books, because it's, uh, let me help this. But like iPad, hold like this, read a book, hold like this, 
using the camera like this, or you're watching a video, and I just believe Netflix and Skype would be two of the most important apps to have optimized like that. And it's a shame Google didn't get out, give the stuff to the developers to optimize it right away, so anyone could go out and use those two apps. I think I uh, I couldn't get Twitter working, which is my Android or uh, my Android my Android Twitter client of choice. So I tried the the official Twitter app, which worked fine until I tried to upload a picture. It crashed and crashed and crashed. Tweetdeck crashed once. Watch out, upload a picture. Worked fine ever, ever since. Both Ustream has problems connecting to Twitter. And Justin TV, when I try to stream with either camera, Justin TV allows you to switch cameras front and back on the fly. Ustream doesn't. But Justin TV crashes as soon as I hit the stream button. Ustream won't well, send out to Twitter, which you if you're only streaming with this, you need to help you your streaming because you can't back out and go to Twitter and say, hey guys, come to my Ustream because multitasking, yeah, but not it's it's safe state. If you start a video on one of these and you back out, the video stops. Um, I've had crashes in email, trying to use a web browser, can't copy and paste correctly, can't uh, lagging when typing, which is probably the one of the most important things for any device. On screen keyboard, I'm using swipe, so that might be it. But typing something in Amazon, I'll hit like I want to find the Galaxy tab. I'll hit I type quick Galaxy. It'll be G space A space L X Y A X Y. That is not good, and it stuttered on even Amazon, Amazon App Store for Android when going through my apps. Well, not, now I have 63 apps on Amazon App Store. That's a lot, but even if I install something and try to scroll up and down, it just it bogs it down, even with the dual core processor. My phone, it's 800 megahertz single core, I don't have a problem with that. Uh, the the best part about this is like with Android, all the apps scale up, or you know most apps. If you if it's compatible on Android, it's compatible throughout Android. So the Google Plus app, nothing. It's not a Honeycomb version. Angry Birds, not a Honeycomb version. Google Reader, it just, it's just a big Android version. You can't see it, but it's just a big Android version. What I do like about Honeycomb is there is a lot of screen real estate here on this tablet. Um, I am only using one screen, the home screen, for, you know, Google Plus, Skype, Twitter, Amazon, Ustream, Pandora, like, you know, setting button, and, uh, my bank account, and then the bottom couple apps, and I and a widget telling me the time and weather. It works fine. Like I don't need these other screens. Like I don't need widgets for my books, my Twitter. I mean, it's it's green real estate because the resolution is so high. It's 1200 by 1280 by 800, which is actually now I think about it. I think that's a 16 by 10, I believe. I don't know, 6x9, 6x10, doesn't really matter on a tablet like this. Everything works great. It looks like viewing angle on auto brightness. I could hold it like this on my view, and I could still see everything just fine. The one thing that does happen when you do that, auto brightness kind of weirds out. One thing one of the, my favorite podcast apps, Pocket Cast, is not compatible with this. So, and I don't want to pay some seven bucks for dog catcher when I got 
when I already bought pocket casts. It's fine. Uh, I, there is an auto rotation switch on here. Uh, so I have it locked into this because that's how you want to use it. But you can if you want. It's just right, there's a menu button. Auto rotation screen on. Now it's like that. Just like the original tablet, but original tab, Galaxy tab, but 10.1 instead of 7. And running Honeycomb instead of Froyo or Claire, whatever that launched with. So overall, tab is a little, about a third, if that, lighter than the iPad, or maybe a third of an ounce lighter than the iPad. But they're to two totally different devices. This is meant for Netflix streaming video that you just either store down here or from your home server as the Wi-Fi. This uh, screen is actually capable of 1080p playback. Even though you can't shoot that with your camera, you can put 1080p video on here. I loaded up. There's a wildlife video. It looks great. The colors are the color. It's same as a TV. Uh, and iPad is more web oriented since you wanna you know hold it like this and book. I don't read so I didn't really do that. But as for playing games, I I think Android more than iPhone it's got scaling down for uh, iOS apps. They can be used on it on iPad, but it's got a big black, it's just the same size as iPad app, iPhone app, but in each have black area on the screen. This scales it up perfectly fine. Also, Flash. Now, most websites, if you go to their mobile version or something, you know, mostly even their desktop version, they use HTML5, which runs fine on iPad, but Flash, I, is, I mean, you could do without Flash, but you should have Flash just because it's what the internet uses right now. In a couple of years, it'll be fine not to have it. But the latest, this when I got this, did not come with the latest. I had to download 10.3. It's the easiest time Flash in the market downloading the latest version, and it worked. So, yeah, this is the tab 10.1. It's 500 bucks for the 16 gig Wi-Fi version. I say if you're in there, uh, I don't think there's a release date for the 8.9, but if you need a tablet now, hate Apple for some reason, and you already in, into the Android ecosystem like I am, I say get this, the 10.1, or you could wait. Till about Christmas time, and check out if 8.9 8, 8 is out, or there's also the WebOS, the HP Touchpad, and also Asus has one, and BlackBerry Rim, they put out one, the BlackBerry Playbook. By Christmas time, it should have all the essential apps, and it should be a good competitor, but if you need it now, hit Apple, I say you can't go wrong. Galaxy yeah, Tab 10.1, uh, 16 gig Wi Fi. Uh, also, if you're on Verizon 4G, I don't think it's use very useful since you could always tether off your phone if needed, but mostly this is couch, couch computing, or home computing, and when you're home, you have Wi Fi. That, that was what you reviewed Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1. Hope you liked it.